Yeah, it's true. It's like uh, I think so many of our clients are facing the extended families living with them um, much more than we've ever seen in the past. So oh, that's, absolutely. That's, yeah. I mean, look how many kids are graduating from college, great schools, great degrees, yeah. and they're home. Right. At least while well, they're trying to get started, for and sure. And they're trying to get yeah. started. Yeah, exactly. So when we start talking about financial strategies, the first thing is strategy must be flexible. It must be able to adjust to uncertainty. You can't account for everything. I mean, let's look at who would have predicted 9-11? Who would have predicted the recent financial crisis we've gone through? Exactly. Who would have predicted that we are involved in the world conflicts that we're involved with? So you can't plan for everything, but that's why you need flexibility. Uh, and the only thing I think people get hung up on these days is they're trying to get it just right, just perfect the first time. Uh, as you know, I come out of the technology world, and there's a couple of phrases in the technology world that engineers get accused of, of which I am an engineer. And but one is getting ready to get ready, right? And the other one is analysis to paralysis. Right. So it is better to put some type of strategy in place that's flexible, and the ability to adjust to that. And part of that flexibility has to be the anticipa anticipation of uh, potential, and actually I call it the reality of higher taxes. Yeah. I mean, when you look at what's going on in the federal government, when you look at what's going on in the California state budget, you look at our local budgets, there's no doubt in my mind which way taxes are going to go. Yeah. So when you're doing your retirement planning, when you're doing your plan for saving for college, you now have to start thinking about, okay, which tax efficient vehicles or buckets should I be in? That becomes part of your strategy. I think, again, in the generation that I was in, the baby boomers, we didn't worry about that too much. I do believe that's the reality of the future. I think you're right. I think for those of us in that um, category, we need to set a plan and we need to start now. It's like the, the delaying it, like you said, even if it's a plan that you adjust and you change, at least you begin. Yeah. So I think that that's, yeah. that's great advice. And start. actually, that's great because one, I was going to give your audience a couple takeaways today. Please, yeah. Give us, give us what would you say, where would be step one? I, well, I think one of the first ones I'd start with is to create a budget and a plan, and you've all heard that before. Right. But to save 10 to 15 percent of your annual household gross income. 10 to 15 percent. Now that's going to be a shocker for a lot of people, because if you look at the savings rate in the United States for the last 8 to 10 years, it's been zero or negative. Right. So there's going to be turnaround in a lot of people's thinking, particularly the age group that we're talking about, your age I group. I think you're right to go with the 10, 15%. Once you've got that in place, then you can spend. Then you can spend on the mortgage, then you can spend on the house and the boat and whatever you want, but you must do that first. Yeah. That's the first takeaway. Uh, another takeaway is do not leave your retirement and college uh, planning to chance. Right. Find a financial right. professional. Yeah. Uh, obtain one or more good referrals from people that you trust for financial professionals. And then once you've identified that professional, uh, meet with them, talk to them. Do they inspire you with their trust and confidence? Are you confident? Because you're going to be working with them for a long time. Well, and you're trusting them, you know, especially today with all of the negative we've heard in the financial world. You know, we need someone that we can count on, that we know is going to look out for our best interests. So Absolutely that's, right. That's and that's why, why I recommend meet with those people yeah. and, and understand them. And then also ask them and determine... Can they help you determine what your financial vision should be? Mm -hmm. Can they help you identify the gap? Can they help you go through the planning strategies we talked about earlier? Meaning, you know, help you figure out what your retirement should be. What's that vision? Right. Can they help you accomplish the vision for your college? Can they help you accomplish the vision for maybe even taking care of aging parents? Well, and even more than that, it's like people say, well, we can do this on our own. But when you're, when you're working with someone like you, it, it creates some accountability, too. It creates that budget, you know, that um, in advance planning where we don't have on our own sometimes. So I think that's a great... That's and a that little voice on your shoulder. Right. The reminder. The reminder, <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. That's, that's wonderful. Well, you know, gosh, is there anything else, last, you know, last little word of wisdom that you can share with our viewers that you think would be helpful? Yeah, actually there is. Uh, I recently uh, read a quote from a person from a long time ago named Confucius. And it's almost like he was reaching out to me through the ages with this statement and preparing me for this talk today. Right. And he bit said, if we do not change direction, we are liable to end up where we are headed. Yeah. 
but it's the very, very sound advice, you know, in, in so many different ways, sound advice. Well, and I so much appreciate you, Dennis, coming down and talking with us. I think your information and your help will be wonderful for our viewers. And I have to tell you, I've known Dennis a long time, and I would only bring people to my clients that I know I can trust. So Dennis has had, you know, his education is extensive, has lived in the Danville area for 20 years. Is that right? Yes. Long time. And uh, I know that you're someone that our, our clients can trust. So tell us where they can reach you. Okay. Uh, my phone number at work is 925-979-2361. My email address is dlyftogt at finsvcs.com. Perfect. And thank you so much for watching today. We sure hope this information has been helpful. And if you do have more questions for Dennis down the path of financial planning and information that would be helpful for you, feel free to give him a call. And we look forward to seeing with, talking with you soon.